Death Race 2 is terrible, but it's also funny. Not many people know about this hidden gem of humor. Not that you wouldn't already have a good idea of what it's like considering it's a prequel to a remake, but before I get to that, I think I'll provide some context as to what gave birth to this travesty. We start off with Death Race 2000, a cult film made by Roger Corman in 1975. It's set 11 years ago, which is also the future. Despite its flaws, I can see why it was so successful. The movie starred David Carradine and Sylvester Stallone, and it was really just one big social commentary on violence in the media. All right, all right, and yes sirree, a clean hit. Too bad the guy was only 38. Just two years older, he'd have been worth three times the points. And I guess you could call this film the catalyst for what kicked off the cliche of everyone in the future being so bloodthirsty and bored that they watch people kill each other on television. Toddlers under 12 now rate a big 70 points. The big score, anyone, any sex, over 75 years old, has been upped to 100 points. I enjoy this movie because it challenges you as an audience member. Even the main character you're rooting for kills people in the film. And it's not perfect, I mean, I'm still a little confused about the point system. I mean, do they win the race if they have the most points? Doesn't that not make it a race anymore? Why are they even going fast? It's not like they're in a hurry to run over people first so that the other drivers don't steal their kills. I mean, they're all going different directions. Can someone explain this to me? Because I don't get it. And Frankenstein's totally hiding the fact that his face is fine. But do they have any cameras anywhere, or...? What are people watching on television as this is happening? How can they tell when people score points if there's no cameras? I don't... Ah. And don't get me wrong, it's enjoyable, but it's definitely a B movie. I mean, this scene's kind of retarded. What the fuck is happening here? The guy isn't even jumping out of the way. I mean, it's like she's aiming for the blanket and not the person. Is she really that bad of a driver? This is like the worst driver in the world. This is really dumb. You know, Myra, some people might think you're two. But me, I think you're one very large baked potato. And then Paul Thomas W.S. Anderson comes along and he's like, I want to make a remake of this movie. Except he doesn't really remake it, he just tells a completely different story and has the same title, kind of. It doesn't really make any sense because he explains it as a prequel. Because right. it's not like the president of America just invented it. He must have taken an existing sporting event or an underground sporting event of some kind and made it legal. And, I, and that was the story we wanted to tell. But then they get David Carradine to voice over Frankenstein again, and then they kill him in the first scene, so it doesn't, I don't, what? And this one's set in the year 2012. Isn't it weird how movies do that? I mean, it's almost 2012 right now. We're gonna catch up to the timeline pretty soon. I guess Paul W.S. Anderson doesn't think this movie will have that long of a shelf life. This is nothing but a popcorn movie. You sit and you watch and you go, oh, explosions and hot chicks, and you know, Jason Statham's pretty hot too. All the while without even realizing that you're just watching a car commercial. We have the, the Riviera, the Trans Am, the Chrysler, the, the Dodge Ram, the Mustang. We have a Porsche from 1988. We have a 7 Series BMW, which we've chopped out the passenger side, so it's rather like driving a First World War fighter jet. So we open up this movie with Frankenstein dying, even though apparently this is a remake. I don't know, if you're not completely consistent, then there's no point in pretending this is the same universe. It doesn't make any sense. We then cut to Jason Statham while a blatant Nine Inch Nails ripoff theme song plays. Oh yeah, machinery and molten metal and manual labor. Mmm, I'm so rugged. This is how I leave my work every day. So it turns out the workers are getting screwed and they're pissed about it. So a SWAT team shows up and goes Oakland on their asses. And then the scene just ends in the middle of it because it doesn't really matter. Well, his job sucks, but at least he's got a family that he loves so much. Ah, uh, I don't get why they do that in movies. Yep, I'm just gonna wait for you to realize I'm here and then kill you. You'd at least think he'd have his hands ready to do something while she's turning around. But I guess it doesn't matter because it worked anyway. Yay, you're framed for murder and you're going to jail. Initial incident. If you're anything like Wes Anderson, Paul W.S. Anderson, you know that if you want North American audiences to be able to relate to the main character, they have to be completely innocent. Challenge the audience members. <laughs> How would North American audiences relate to a character that's done anything wrong in their lives? Cause we're all so perfect. Cause even though everybody's such a badass, they also love their family. Oh, little baby, oh! 
Mr. Paul, you're the driving force behind this film. Yes. <laughs> I was a bit of a slow driver. So then Jason Statham's in prison, and he's like, well, this sucks, I'm in prison. And then the other guys are like, we don't take too kindly to murderers in prison. And he's like, rah, I'm Jason Statham, bitch. And then this bitch is like, yeah, you should just join the death race. We need someone to replace Frankenstein and pretend they're Frankenstein because we're the only ones that know that Frankenstein is actually dead. And we made a lot of money off of him, so you should just be Frankenstein. If you win five races, you're free, and Frankenstein's already won four. Remember, kids, it's okay to murder people as long as you're a sick driver. But wait a minute, they spend the rest of the movie trying to kill him. For all they know, they could only get one more episode with Frankenstein. It must be a lot of money. So it turns out they take a bunch of hot chicks from the women's prison and they get them to be navigators. You know, they can't let them drive because they're women. And I guess you're not eligible if you're ugly or even mediocre looking. Sorry. They're just there to look hot, basically. Doesn't it kind of suck for them? I mean, the fates of their lives and freedoms rest in some other random prisoner's hands. It's not like the navigators have any say in anything. They could be like, yo, do that, and the driver could just be like, no. You're a woman. There's no point in them even being there. Yeah, better ratings, because we have tits. So they're clearly there to look hot. But they don't give them some sort of like cheerleader job or something. I'm pretty sure most guys just want to see hot chicks. Not see hot chicks get mangled in car accidents. And that's true, and Paul W.S. Anderson knows this. Because whenever we see a car crash, we only get to see the dude die, unless she's Asian. Their names aren't even on the scoreboard, and if you're watching Death Race on TV, then you can't even see the hot chicks because it's fucking mirrored glass. There's not really much else to say about this movie. It's just shit, okay? They raise a bunch and there's a happy ending, and they don't really care about the quality of the film. <laughs> it's all about money. So it's always, it's always about money, Manny. It's always about money, you know that. The, the studio keeps referring to this, but I think they can't quite believe they made it. Because they keep saying this is the this is the major studio movie that should never have been made. Because it, it kind of feels more like a gritty independent movie but made on a big budget. Because it it really is it, it, it's unapologetically hardcore. Yeah, that's right. You're an indie director. You're so uncompromising. Yeah, you don't care about what sells, you just want to make art. You don't blatantly reuse clips in a movie that you actually care about, you fuck. <laughs> You have probably, I think, which is the most vile and coolest line of dialogue this Maybe. year. Okay, cocksucker. Fuck with me, and we'll see who shits on the sidewalk. Absolutely. <laughs> Paul Anderson, the director's like, that's the best line I've ever written. That is the absolute best line I've ever written. And then there's Death Race 2, a movie that you find walking through a video store, and then you say, hey, I didn't know there was a Death Race 2, and look, Jason Statham's even at... That's not Jason Statham. Now I know that they're not playing the same characters, but isn't it really obvious that they tried to get a guy that looked like Jason Statham? Except Jason's more buff. Maybe you shouldn't try putting Luke Goss in the role of a badass. I'm not looking for a best friend, okay? So just leave me alone. I just see a pretty boy. Every time he tries to act tough, it seems so forced. I've got nothing against the guy, but he's just not intimidating. But I'll get more into that later. You're probably wondering who would bother to make such a piece of shit. For me, I could use Paul's world that he created and bring it to this movie and take it a little bit further. Paul was concerned about who would be taking over his baby. When he heard that uh, Rule was interested, he was pleased with that choice. I'm sorry, who? Okay, never mind, I guess it doesn't matter. The movie starts out with, yep, that same fucking song from the first one. And if you're still not convinced what you're hearing is a ripoff, just listen to this song, The Mark Has Been Made by Nine Inch Nails. Well, fuck. The exact same instruments. Almost the same melody, bass line, and tempo with just enough tweaks so that they don't have to pay any royalties. Well, I'm gonna keep this song going because it's better. We start the movie with Danny Trejo. Okay. First of all, I just wanted to play a guy named Goldberg. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the only Mexican Jew in the world. We then see Rule's cartoonish interpretation of life in prison. The extras have no idea what they're doing there. They're so uncoordinated. Nothing's even happened yet, and this is already awesome. This picture, while it's not overtly funny, there's a certain amount of humor in it. I love this movie. <laughs> quick cut, quick cut, lack of wide shots, inappropriate tone of music, zero martial arts training, cheesy sound effect, dub, dub, dub. Ago, Why are you there? Anyway, a SWAT team shows up and they're about as trained as the rest of the actors. This poorly coordinated scene goes on until a helicopter shows up, and we all know if a helicopter shows up and it's in slow motion, it's over. Speaking of unnecessary slow motion... 
We're introduced to Sean Bean. We're also introduced to a lot of almost boob. In the background and out of focus boob, and no boob. I think it's the third world's greatest game, right? <laughs> what the fuck are you laughing at? Excuse us, please. Get out of here, you irrelevant character. They start talking and we figure out that they're friends and that Sean Bean's hiring him to pull off some sort of bank heist. When suddenly, bum, da -da 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 -da, there's a fucking car. I take back what I said about the remake. That's not a car commercial, this is. Shelbyautos.com. The next scene begins and we start to learn about how much the writer enjoys writing characters that have no respect for women. Was something I said funny? I'm sorry, is it just me or does Ving Rhames seem really out of place in this movie? He sort of tried to make it stand out and different from the other Death Race in the films. I don't know, I didn't see the other Death Race, so I don't, you know. Anyway, they start this foreboding conversation about how much money could be made off of watching people kill each other and then it just ends. So these guys get to the bank and they put extra emphasis on the whole we should do this without using guns thing. And then the police show up just by coincidence. Their company, get out of there. Benny, you copy? Fucker, don't worry about it, man. Don't stress out. Abort, get out of there. Chill, man. Jonesy, abort. Abort, get out of there. It's under control. I'm sorry, you guys are both idiots. What's the point of having a look at it if you don't fucking listen to him? And why didn't you say that it was cops? Maybe he would have listened if you just said that. God damn it. Now he has to show off his martial arts skills. So Luke Goss gets pissed and he's all like, oh, 20 years and nobody got hurt. Why'd you have to hurt anybody? And then all of a sudden, slow mo. Pretty good shot. And then the soundtrack seems to forget what movie this is, and I don't even know what they're trying to do with this. I have to say that's a beautiful moment in, in the film. When, the gunshot. Yeah, your reaction. You've obviously seen the film. It's really beautifully done. Thank you. Uh, it, you know, you, you shot in slow motion. There's this wonderful kind of scene, moment in the film where the director had all these phonetics behind us and shotguns and kind of mayhem. And I'm in this kind of surreal moment where I can't really understand what's just happened. I realize clearly I've just taken the life of a man. It's just, it's life changing for many, many people. So then they have a chase scene and it's really boring. The cuts are so quick that you barely have enough time to process what you're seeing. You know, just because you filmed all those angles doesn't mean that you have to show every single one. Sometimes you just gotta learn to let it go. But I think that Rule has a problem with letting go because he seems to want to linger on every special effects shot ever. Oh my god, that shot turned out so good. Let's make it last eight minutes. Seriously, that music does not fucking belong there. So he's like, stop killing people. Get out of my car. I don't believe in murder. And then Sean Bean sees him on TV and then overreacts a little. Fuck. Fuck you now. Yeah, chase scene on the freeway. Oh no, a dead end. Wait, what the fuck? Not like he turned off the freeway onto another part of the freeway that he wasn't supposed to go, he was just on the freeway. Where were those other cars going? What the fuck? What's funny is that these cops going over the edge didn't actually get pushed over. They were just driving ahead of the person they were chasing. How are you out so fast? You know what this scene needs? Slow motion. And that really shitty music. Oh, I didn't want to hurt anybody. I'm so pretty. Initial incident. Hey, the director decided to show some boobs.